The act of spelling, S ostensibly <laughs> mundane, yet critical to our cognitive process. O the act of spelling, D the arrangement of letters A to form linguistic syzygy. I and so we are here to watch 26 of the brightest students from North and East Texas competing against each other and the dictionary in the sport of spelling. From Studio A at WFAA in downtown Dallas, this is the 66th Annual Dallas Regional Spelling Bee. The 66th Annual Dallas Regional Spelling Bee, presented by the Dallas Sports Commission. Sponsored by Leon Capital Group and Southwest Airlines. Here's your host for the competition, WFAA's Dia Wall. Welcome to Studio A. This is our beehive for today's competition. In moments, these spellers will take center stage. There's excitement, and yeah, there may be a few nerves as well, because there's a big prize on the line. I'm Dia Wall. We're so happy you're here to watch this incredible competition play out before us. We have an esteemed panel of judges here with us today to ensure a fair competition. First, I'm pleased to announce our announcer, Jay Quitman Stevens, an attorney and director with Crow and Dunleavy, former two-time champion of the Dallas Regional Spelling Bee. He served as lead judge for 20 years. Let's give it up for him. We have Fernando De Leon, CEO of Leon Capital Group. Fernando was a speller in his school days. His favorite bee memory was winning the South Texas Regional Spelling Bee, earning an Encyclopedia Britannica back when there was no internet. Hi, Fernando. Alex Gilbert is the Director of Marketing with the Dallas Sports Commission. Alex has been involved with the Bee for three years. Alex's favorite memory of the Bee is watching the Dallas Regional Bee spellers move on to success both in and out of the Bee program. Hi, Alex. Our final judge today, Bren Dancer, retired coordinator of the Elementary Gifted and Talented Education Program at Dallas ISD. Bren organized and conducted a local bee here for more than 20 years. Bren's favorite bee memory is a surprise fire drill that was ordered by the fire marshal during the school bee. An unexpected but welcome 20-minute break. And yes, the fire marshal stayed and cheered the spellers on once the bee resumed. Hi, Bren. Our official record keeper for today's B is WFAA's own Tiffany Liu. Let's give her a big wave, everybody. Thank you all for being here. We also want to recognize the supportive families who have worked diligently to help these students study and prepare for different levels of competition. Families, a round of applause to thank you for the support. Congratulations on making it to the Regional Spelling Bee. All right, there are more than 470,000 words in the Merriam-Webster Unabridged Dictionary. So spellers, while you may have memorized a list of words, what you encounter today may be some of the words that you have not studied. When it's your time up here on this stage, slow down, ask questions, think positively, and spell one letter at a time. This is a traditional spell down. Each speller will receive one word per round, and standard National Spelling Bee rules apply today. If a student spells correctly, they move on to the next round of competition. If a student spells incorrectly, you'll hear a bell. And that student is out. If every student in a round misspells, all the students in the round come back into the competition. If a student starts to spell a word, they may start over, but the sequence of letters already spelled may not be changed. And with that, everyone take a deep breath. You've made it this far, and we are all so, so proud of you. Now, here's our B pronouncer, Jay Quitman Stevens, we call him Q, to start the competition. Good luck. Okay, so speller number one, why don't you proceed to the microphone? Let's begin. Good luck, everyone. Your word is wand. Wand? May I have the definition? means a slender rod often carried by fairies or other beings associated with magic or the supernatural. Wand. Wand. W-A-N-D. Wand. That's correct. Banana. Banana. What's the definition? 
means the elongated, often curved, and usually tapering fruit of a tree-like tropical herb having soft, pulpy flesh and a rind that is usually yellow or orange colored when ripe. Okay, could you repeat that? Banana. Banana. Okay. Banana. B-A-N-A-N-A. Banana. That's correct. Rocket. Rocket. May you please repeat the definition? The definition means to travel rapidly. Rocket. Rocket. R-O-C-K-E-T. Rocket. That's correct. Become. Become. May I have the definition, please? Yes. To take on a new role, essence, or nature. Become. Become. B-E-C-O-M-E. -E. Become. That's correct. Okay, this word has a homonym, so I'm going to give you the word, and then let me give you the definition in a sentence before you attempt to spell it, okay? So your word is purse, and it means a receptacle as a handbag, pocketbook, or wallet used to carry money and often other small objects about with one. Your sentence is, Kathleen tossed her sunglasses and keys into her purse and headed out the door. Purse. Purse. P-U-R-S-E. Purse. That's correct. Vault. Vault. Can I have the definition, please? Yes. A room for safekeeping valuables and usually built of steel. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, this word went from Latin to French before becoming English. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Can you please use the word in a sentence? The treasure hunters managed to break into the underground vault only to find it empty. Vault. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Vault. Thank you, Vault. V A U L T, Vault. That's correct. Thank you. Trendy. Trendy, can I have the definition, please? Very fashionable, up to date, chic. Can I have the language of origin, please? This word is from originally English parts. Can you repeat the word? Trendy. Trendy. Can you use that in a sentence? Yes. Chloe bought her trendy new scarf on sale. Trendy. Can you repeat it? Trendy. Trendy. T R E N D Y. That's correct. Mister. May you repeat the word? Mister. Can I have the definition? Yes, it means sir, and it's used in direct address. Mr. Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R. That's correct. Seller. This word's a homonym, so let me give you the definition and sentence before you attempt to spell it, okay? A seller is one that offers for sale, a salesperson. Here's your sentence. Raina is a seller of propane and propane accessories. Seller. Seller. May I please have the language of origin? It's originally English. May I please have the part of speech? It's a noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Nope. Seller. Can you please repeat the word? Seller. Seller. S E L L. E R seller. That, that's correct. Shipping. Can I have the definition, please? Causing to be transported. Shipping. Can you use it in a sentence? Marcel is shipping his packages via overnight courier. Can you repeat the word? Shipping. Can you use it in a sentence one more time? Marcel is shipping his packages via overnight courier. Shipping. S H I P P. I N G shipping. That's correct. Okay, so this word has a homonym, so let me give you the definition and the sentence before you attempt to spell, okay? The word's handyman. It means one who performs miscellaneous or routine tasks as about a home, public building, factory, or laboratory. Here's your sentence The house was in good shape and only needed a few tasks done by the local handyman. 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 H-A-N-D-Y. 
Y M A N handyman. That's correct. Godspeed. Godspeed. Can you use the definition? The definition is a wish for success given at parting, sometimes used as an interjection. Godspeed. Godspeed. G O D S P E E D. That's correct. Earmark. Can I have the definition? Yes. To designate or set aside funds for a specific use or owner. Earmark. Can you use it in a sentence? Seth will earmark money in the account for his grandson when he comes of age. Can you repeat the word? Earmark. Earmark. E A R M A R K. Earmark. That's correct. Barbie. May I have that in the definition, please? Yeah, it means barbecue, and the term is used chiefly in Australia. Barbie. May I have that in a sentence, please? The tourists were horrified when the bush guy jokingly said he would put a crocodile steak on the Barbie for their dinner. Barbie. May I have that in the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Barbie. B-A-R-B-Y. Barbie. Barbie is B-A-R-B-I-E. A mass. May I have a definition? It means to collect for oneself, to gather as one's own, to accumulate. A mass. May I have a sentence? Justin hopes to amass a large fortune by selling lemonade in front of his house. Amass. Amass. A M M A S S. I'm going to need to hear a replay on that. Let's stop the B. Let's go hear the replay. Amass is spelled A M A S S. Oh, so I just needed one M? One M. Okay. Headlong. Headlong. May I please have all the information? Okay, so it's an adverb. It means without delay or pause in a rush. Here's the sentence. The campers moved headlong to the dining hall when the dinner bell rang. The etymology is that the word is originally English. There are no alternate pronunciations. Headlong. Headlong. H-E-A-D-L-O-N-G. Headlong. That's correct. Royal. May I have the definition? To cook by direct exposure to radiant heat as on a grill over live coals or beneath a gas flame or electric coil. Could you please repeat the word? Royal. Royal. R-O-Y-A-L-E. Royal. Royal is spelled B-R-O-I-L. Caramel. Caramel? Caramel. Can I have the definition, please? Yes. A brownish orange to light brown that is lighter than sorrel or tawny and redder and lighter than raw sienna. Caramel. Caramel. C-A-R-A-M-E-L. Caramel. That's correct. Concrete. Can I have the definition? means a hard, strong building material made by mixing a solidifying material and a mineral aggregate such as sand, gravel, or rock with sufficient water to cause the cement to set and bind. Concrete. Concrete. C-O-N-C-R-E-T-E. -E. That's Concrete. correct. Concrete. Okay, so this word's a homonym, so let me give you the definition and a sentence before you attempt to spell, okay? So your word is exercise, and it means to exert the body for the sake of developing and maintaining physical fitness. Here's your sentence. The sports teams exercise in the gymnasium when it rains or snows. Exercise. Exercise. 
E X C E R S I S E. Exercise. Exercise is E X E R C I S E. Spiteful. Spiteful. S P I T E F U L. That's correct. Iceberg. Can I have the definition? A large mass of land ice broken from a glacier at the edge of a body of water that, when afloat, has only a small part above the surface and that in the ocean floats with subsurface currents often to great distances. Iceberg. Iceberg. I C E B E R G. Iceberg. That's correct. So your word is formalize. The definition means to render something exact methodical or orderly to stylize. Here's your sentence. Letitia asked her calligrapher to formalize the seating cards for her upcoming wedding. Formalize. Formalize. F-O-R-M-A-L-I-S-E. That's correct. Isolation. Isolation. Could I have the definition? The action of setting apart from others or the condition of being set apart. Are there any alternate pronunciations? So, let's see here. Isolation, isolation, isolation. 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 I-S-O-L-A-T-I-O-N. Isolation. That's correct. Corkscrew. Corkscrew, can I get the definition, please? It means spiral. Uh, corkscrew, C-O-R-K-S-C-R-E-W. Corkscrew? That's correct. Right. Crocodile. Crocodile. Uh, could I have the definition, please? Any of several thick-skinned, long-bodied aquatic reptiles of tropical and subtropical waters including certain voracious forms. Crocodile. Crocodile. C-R-O-C-O-D-I-L-E. Crocodile. That's correct. <laughs> Reflect. Reflect. May I have the definition? To think and consider, especially after the immediate event. To think quietly and calmly. Reflect. Reflect. R E F L E C T. Reflect. That's correct. Your word summary. It means a short restatement of the main points as of an argument for easier remembering, for better understanding, or for showing the relation of the points. Here's your sentence James forgot to read the book on turtles before visiting the aquarium, so he asked his brother to give him a summary instead. Summary. Could you repeat the word? Summary. Summary. Okay. Could you repeat the definition? A short restatement of the main points as of an argument for easier remembering, for better understanding, or for showing the relation of the points. Okay. Could you repeat the word one more time? Summary. Summary. S-U-M-M-A-R-Y. Summary. That's correct. Thank you. So your word is Highlands. It means the chiefly mountainous northern part of Scotland, north of a line connecting the Fifth of Clyde, excuse me, the Firth of Clyde and the Firth of Tay. Here's your sentence. Ashok's chief goal for his trip to the Highlands is to climb to the summit of Ben Nevis. Highlands. Highlands. H-I-G-H-L-A-N-D-S, Highlands. That's correct. Your word's compass, and it means a device for determining directions on the Earth's surface by means of a magnetic needle turning freely on a pivot and pointing to the magnetic north. Here's your sentence. A compass is a necessary piece of equipment for the serious hiker. Compass. Compass. C-O-M-P-A-S-S. -S. Compass. That's correct. Curio. Can I have the definition? 
Something arousing interest as being novel, rare, or bizarre. Curio. Can you repeat the word? Curio. Would you like a sentence? Yes, please. Uncle Bud has a spectacular collection of oddities, including a curio that he claims is the jawbone of Napoleon's horse. Curio. Curio. Q U. E R. I O. Curio. Curio is spelled C U R I O. Debunk. Debunk? Debunk. Debunk. Can I have the definition, please? To expose the sham pretensions or exaggerated claims of. Debunk. Can I have the language of origin, please? The word is from an American geographical name and an English element. Debunk. Debunk. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a verb. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Can you please use the word in a sentence? The investigator could easily debunk the manufacturer's claims by demonstrating what happened when one shook the machine. Debunk. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Debunk. Thank you. Debunk. D E B U N K. Debunk. That's correct. Thank you. Quota. Quota. Can I have the definition? A proportional part, a share, especially. The share or proportion assigned to each in a division or to each member of a body. Quota. Can I have the language of origin, please? It's from Latin. Can you use it in a sentence? Each member of the fishing club was allowed a quota of four fish per month from the stocked lake. Quota. Quota. Um, quota. Can you repeat it? Quota. Quota. Q U O T A. That's correct. Stampede. May I have the definition? It means a wild, headlong rush or flight of a number of animals, usually due to fright. Can you use it in a sentence? The lightning strike caused a cattle stampede. Stampede, S-T-A-M-P-I-D-E. Stampede is spelled S-T-A-M-P-E-D-E. -E. Your word is aforesaid. It means mentioned previously. Here's your sentence. The lawyer asked that the aforesaid remarks by the witness be struck from the record. Aforesaid. May I please have the part of speech? It's an adjective. May I please have the language of origin? The word is originally English. Can you please repeat the word? Aforesaid. Aforesaid. A F O R E S A I D. Aforesaid. That's correct. Your word is lupine. It means of, relating to, or resembling a wolf. Here's your sentence. Little Red Riding Hood should have known right away that the lupine creature in her grandmother's bed was not really her grandmother. Lupine. Can you use it in a sentence again? Little Red Riding Hood should have known right away that the lupine creature in her grandmother's bed was not really her grandmother. Lupine. Can I have the definition again? Means of, relating to, or resembling a wolf. Can you repeat it one more time? Lupine. Lupine. L U P I N E. Lupine. That's correct. Optimum. Optimum. O P T I M U M. Optimum. That's correct. Respite. Can you repeat that? Respite. Can you give me the definition? 
Temporary intermission of labor or of any process or operation, an interval of rest or relief, respite. Can you use it in a sentence? Seeking respite from the arguing of his siblings, Aaron left the table in the middle of their family dinner. Respite. Respect. R-A-S-P-E-C-T. Respite is spelled R-E-S-P-I-T-E. The word is emerald. It means a highly prized gemstone of rich green color. Here's your sentence. Beth's grandfather has a lovely unmounted emerald that he plans to give her for a graduation present. Emerald. Can you repeat the word? Emerald. Emerald. E-M-E-R-A-L-D. Emerald. That's correct. Armadillo. Armadillo. May I please have all the information? Okay, it's a noun. It means any of several burrowing, chiefly nocturnal mammals having body and head encased in an armor of small bony plates. Here's your sentence. Using its long, sticky tongue to extract ants from their nests, the armadillo may eat up to 40,000 ants at a sitting. The etymology is the word is from a word that went from Latin to Spanish. Emerald. Excuse me. Armadillo. Armadillo. Yeah. A R M A D I L L O. Armadillo. That's correct. Permafrost. 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 Can I have the definition, please? It means a permanently frozen layer of soil, subsoil, or other deposits, sometimes including the bedrock and occurring at variable depth below the Earth's surface in Arctic or subarctic regions. Permafrost. Permafrost. P E R M A F R O S T. Permafrost. That's correct. Thank you. Situation. Can I have the definition? Yes, it means position with respect to conditions and circumstances. Situation. S I T U A T I O N. That's correct. Applicable. Applicable. A P L I C A B L E. Applicable. You just said one. Applicable is spelled A P P L I C A B L E. <laughs> Effortless. Can I have the definition, please? Means having the effect by virtue of ease, mastery, artistry, or smoothness of performance of being or having been accomplished without hard work. Effortless. Effortless. E F F O R T L E S S. Effortless. That's correct. Disrepair. Can you repeat the word, please? Disrepair. Can you give me the de definition? Yes, it means the quality or state of being in need of fixing. Disrepair. D-I-S-R-E-P-A-I-R. -E That's correct. Combustible. Combustible? Combustible. Could I have the definition? It means capable of undergoing burning, used especially of materials that catch fire and burn when subjected to fire. Combustible. Combustible. Could you use it in a sentence? The long dry spell has made the brush and trees quite combustible. Combustible. C-O-M-B-U-S-T-I-B-L-E. Combustible. That's correct. Your word citation. It means the act of quoting verbatim the spoken, written, or printed words of another. Um, here's your sentence. When Zoe appeared skeptical that the official had actually used those words, Elena showed her the citation. All right, citation. C I T A T I O N. Citation? That's correct. Flipperling. Uh, could you say that again? Flipperling. Flipperling. F. L I P P E R L I N G flipperling. That's correct. Ectoplasm. 
Can you repeat that? Ectoplasm. May I have the definition? Means the emanation from a spiritualistic medium that is believed to affect telekinesis and similar phenomena. Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm? Ectoplasm. E C T O P L A S M. Ectoplasm. That's correct. Univocal. Okay, univocal. Uh, could I have the definition? Means having one meaning only, subject to a single interpretation. Univocal. Univocal. U N I V O C A L. Univocal. That's correct. Realm. Realm. Can I have the definition, please? Means a sphere, domain, or range. Realm. Realm. R E A L M. Realm. That's correct. Volition. Volition. Can I have the definition, please? Means the act of willing or choosing, the act of deciding. Can I have the language of origin, please? The word is from French, which took it from Latin. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Can you please use the word in a sentence? The notary public asked Paulina to state that she was signing the document of her own volition. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Volition. Thank you. Volition. V O L I T I O N. Volition. That's correct. Thank you. Probative. May I please have the definition? That furnishes, establish, or contributes toward proof. Probative. May I please have the language of origin? This word went from Latin to English. Can you please repeat the word? Probative. 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 P R O B I T I V E. Probative. Probative is spelled P R O B A T I V E. Venial. Can you repeat the word? Venial. Venial. Uh, can I have the definition? Meriting no particular censure or notice. Excusable. Insignificant. Venial. Venial. Can I have the part of speech? It's an adjective. Venial. Can you give me all the information? Okay, so here's your sentence. Mrs. Dawson could only find venial faults in Theo's research paper. The etymology is originally Latin. This word passed through French before becoming English. It's pronounced venial or venial. Venial. V-E-N-I-A-L. Venial. That's correct. So your word summoned, it means bade to come or go, commanded or requested the presence or service of, sent for, called. Here's your sentence. Mr. Patel summoned a doctor after his daughter fell and injured her ankle. Summoned. Summoned. S-U-M-M-O-N-E-D. Summoned. That's correct. Pantomime. Can I have the definition? It means a sequence of movements or actions not accompanied by speech or seen from beyond earshot. Pantomime. Can you use it in a sentence? Lola's elaborate pantomime managed to convey both boredom and frustration. Can you repeat the word? Pantomime. Can you repeat the definition? It means a sequence of movements or actions not accompanied by speech or seen from beyond earshot. Pantomime. P A N T I M I M E Pantomime. Pantomime is P A N T O M I M E. <laughs> Octonocular. Octonocular. May I please have all the information? It's an adjective. It means having eight eyes. Here's the sentence. While there are six-eyed spiders and even eyeless spiders, the tarantula is an octonocular spider. The etymology is the word consists of a Latin element plus a Latin-derived English word. There are no alternate pronunciations. Octonoc Can you please repeat the... Oh, sorry. Octonocular. Octonocular. 
O C T O N O C U L A R. Octinocular. That's correct. Ensued. Can you repeat the word? Ensued. Can I get a definition? It means followed as a chance, likely, or necessary consequences. Excuse me, consequence. Resulted. Ensued. Can you repeat the word? Yes, ensued. Would you like a sentence? Sure. Okay. After the, after the results of the referee's review were announced over the loudspeakers, chaos ensued in the stadium. Ensued. I N S U E D ensued. Ensued is E N S U E D. A glossal. It means having no tongue used in zoology. Here's your sentence. The waters of the Amazon basis, excuse me, the waters of the Amazon basin are home to a species of a glossal frogs. A glossal. A glossal. A G L O S S A L. A glossal. That's correct. Gingivitis. Um, can I have the definition? Means inflammation of the gums. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? Beth has her teeth cleaned regularly to prevent gingivitis. G I N G A L I D A S. Gingivitis is G I N G I V I T I S. Typhlology. Typhlology. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Could I have the definition? It's the scientific study of blindness, its causes, effects, and control. Typhlology. Typhlology. Uh, could you use it in a sentence? Researchers in typhlology have found that certain nutritional deficiencies can result in the clouding and softening of the cornea. Typhlology. Typhlology. Could I have the language of origin? It's from Greek. Typhlology. T Y P H L O L O G Y. Typhlology. That's correct. Unchristened. Unchristened. Uh, can I get the definition, please? Not named, unidentified, unspecified. Unchristened. U N C H R I S T E N E D. Unchristened. That's correct. Brontophobia. 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 B R O N T O. P H O B I A. Brontophobia. That's correct. <laughs> Dimorphism. Can you repeat that? Dimorphism. Dimorphism? Can you give me the definition? It means difference as a form, color, size between two individuals or kinds of individuals that might be expected to be similar or identical. Dimorphism. Can you use it in a sentence? Screech owls exhibit color dimorphism, being either gray or reddish. Dimorphism. D I M O R P H I S M. That's correct. Lutrine. Could you repeat that? Lutrine. Lutrine. Okay, what's the definition? It means over relating to the otters. Oh, okay. Uh, repeat the word? Lutrine. Lutrine. L U T R I N E. Lutrine. That's correct. Recusancy can also be pronounced recusancy. Recusancy, recusancy. Can you please repeat the definition? Okay, the definition is refusal to accept or obey constituted authority. Recusancy or recusancy. R-A-C-U 
C A N S Y. Recusancy is spelled R E C U S A N C Y. Ingratiate. Can you please repeat the word? Ingratiate. May I have the information? Yes, it's to make agreeable to someone. It's a verb. The sentence is, the new employee tried to ingratiate herself with her boss. The word was formed in English from originally Latin parts. Ingratiate. May you please repeat the word one more time? Ingratiate. Ingratiate. E N G R A C I A T E. Ingratiate. Ingratiate is I N G R A T I A T E. <laughs> Persuasible. Persuasible. Can I have the definition, please? Means capable of winning over by an appeal to one's reason and feelings as into doing or believing something. Persuasible. Persuasible. Can I have the language of origin, please? This word came from French, which formed it from Latin. Can you please use the word in a sentence? The self-help guru proved to be a persuasible orator. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Persuasible, persuasible. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's an adjective. Can I have the language of origin, please? It's words from French, which formed it from Latin. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Persuasible, persuasible. Thank you, persuasible. P, E, R, S, U, A, S, I, B, L, E. Persuasible. That's correct. Thank you. Analepsis. It means the description of an event or scene from an earlier time that interrupts a chronological narrative, a literary flashback. Here's your sentence. Harriet found the author's use of analepsis difficult to follow. Analepsis. Analepsis. Can I have the language of origin? This word's originally Greek. Can you be the language of origin? Greek. Oh, okay. Can you repeat the word? Analepsis. 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 A N A L E P S I S. That's correct. Escarpment. Escarpment. Can I have the definition? A long cliff or steep slope separating two comparatively level or more gently sloping surfaces. Escarpment. Es escarpment. Can you use it in a sentence? From the top of the excuse me, from the top of the escarpment. Peter had a great view of both baseball fields. Escarpment. Escarpment. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Escarpment. 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 Can I have the def definition one more time, please? A long cliff or steep slope separating two comparatively level or more gently sloping surfaces. Can you repeat the word? Escarpment. Escarpment. E S C A R P M E N T. That's correct. Hipsterism. Can you repeat it, please? Hipsterism. Can I have the definition, please? Is the quality or state of being characterized by a keen, informed awareness of or interest in what is new or smart, extremely alert and knowing. Hipsterism. Hipsterism. H I. P S T E R I U M hipsterism. Hipsterism is H I F excuse me H I P S T E R I S M. She said you. Quadriceps. Can I have the definition, please? The great extensor muscle of the front of the thigh divided above into four parts which unite in a single tendon. Quadriceps. Quadriceps. Q-U-A-D-R-I-C-E-P-S. Quadriceps. That's correct. Protuberant. Protuberant. P-R-O-T-U-B-E-R-A-N-T. Protuberant. That's correct. Lousicide. Lausicide, L-O-U, 
S I C I D E, Laos Society. That's correct. <laughs> Mephitic. Can you repeat that? Mephitic. May I have the definition? It means offensive to the sense of smell, noxious, pestilential. Mephitic. Can I have the language of origin? This word is from Latin, which took it from Oscan. Can you use it in a sentence? Bernice could tell by the mephitic smell of her dog's fur that he had met with a skunk while playing outdoors. Mephitic. M. O F I D I C. Mephitic. Mephitic is M E P H I T I C. <laughs> Quirt. It means a riding whip used especially in the western U.S. and consisting of a short handle as of wood or leather to which is attached a rawhide lash. Could I have the language of origin? This is a word that went from Latin to Spanish. Here's your sentence. Eager to get home, Juanita urged her horse on by using the quirt. Okay. Could you repeat the word? Quirt. Quirt. Q-U-I-R-T. Quirt. That's correct. Ewer. It means a usually vase-shaped pitcher or jug with a handle and often a spout for ease of pouring. Here's your sentence. Keith knocked the ewer over and spilled all the lemonade. It's a noun. This word is from a Latin word that became French before becoming English. Ewer. Ewer. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's basically the same. Ewer. Ewer. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Can I please have the definition one more time? A usually vase-shaped pitcher or jug with a handle and often a spout for ease of pouring. Ewer. Ewer. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Ewer. Thank you, Ewer. E-W-E-R. Ewer. That's correct. Thank you. Pelagial. Pelagial. Uh, can I have the language of origin? This word is formed from a part that passed from Greek to Latin plus an English element. Pelagial. 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 P E L A G I A L. That's correct. Yabbies. It's a plural noun. It means a small burrowing crayfish that are found in most creeks and water holes in Australia. Yabbies. And Ca yelled. Let me give you the sentence. Catching yabbies is a popular activity in Australia, so much so that in some areas there is a limit as to how many a person can catch in one day. Yabbies. No alternate pronunciation. It's plural noun. Word is from a native name in Australia. Yabbies. Can you repeat the word? Yabbies. Yabbies. Yabbies, Y A B B I E S. Yabbies. That's correct. Your word is flesh. It can also be pronounced flesh. It's a noun. It means in fencing, a method of reaching the opponent that is used, especially with saber or a pay, and that consists of one or more rapid steps forward, beginning with the rear foot. Leslin's coach advised her to take advantage of her speed and try a flash against her next opponent. Flash. Can you please repeat the word? Flash. F flash. F L E C H E flash. That's correct. Smithereens. Smithereens. May I please have all the information? It's a plural noun. It means bits or fragments. Your sentence is, Eldon watched in horror as the delicate bowl fell and smashed into smithereens. The word is from Irish Gaelic. There are no alternate pronunciations. Smithereens. Smithereens? Smithereens. S-M-I-T-H-E-R-E-E-N-S. -E -E smithereens. That's correct. Henotheism. 
Do you have the definition? It means the worship of one god without denying the existence of other gods. Henotheism. H E N O T H E I S M. Henotheism. That's correct. The word's frazzle, it's a noun. It means ice crystals or granules, sometimes resembling slush, that are formed in turbulent water. Here's your sentence. On his early morning walk, Reese noticed that that frazzle had formed on the upstream side of the rocks near the edge of the river. Frazzle. Frazzle, could I have a language of origin? The word passed from Latin to French to Canadian French. Frazzle. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Frazzle, Frazil. Frazzle. F R A Z I L. Frazzle. That's correct. Senecio. Senecio. Uh, can I get all the information? This word is from Latin. It's a noun. It means a plant of a genus of very widely distributed herbs, shrubs, and trees that have alternate or basal leaves and heads composed of both tubular and radiate or only tubular flowers and mostly yellow rays. Here's your sentence. Aviel's favorite house plant is her Senecio because it's easy to care for and provides a splash of fun color to her kitchen. Senecio can also be pronounced Senecio. Senecio, Senecio. Senecio, S-E-N-E-C-I-O, Senecio? That's correct. Your word's cousin. It means to deceive by artful wheedling or tricky dishonesty, to cheat, to defraud. Sentence, Aaliyah's father told her that he fears that the car dealer will cousin her, but she is well prepared. Cousin. Cousin. C-O-Z-E-N. Cousin. That's correct. Semaphore. Oh, could you repeat that? Semaphore. Semaphore? Semaphore. Okay, what's the definition? A system of visual signaling as between ships in which the sender holds a flag in each hand and moves their arms to different positions according to a code alphabet. Semaphore. Okay. S E M A P H O R E. Semaphore. That's correct. Krakambush. Krakambush. Can I have the definition, please? A cone-shaped stack of cream puffs coated with caramelized sugar. Can I have the language of origin, please? French. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Can you please use the word in a sentence? A croque-en-bouche is a traditional type of French wedding des dessert. dessert. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Croque-en-bouche. Thank you, croque en bouche. C R O Q U E M B O U C H E. Croque en bouche. That's correct. Thank you. Dysrhythmia. Dysrhythmia? Uh, can I have the definition, please? A condition which occurs following a long flight through several time zones and probably results from disruption of human body rhythms that occur in 24-hour cycles, also known as jet lag. Dysrhythmia. Can I have the language of origin? Word was formed in Latin from two originally Greek parts. Can you use it in a sentence? The travel agent gave the tour group several tips on how to avoid dysrhythmia. Dysrhythmia. D Y S R H Y T H M I A. That's correct. Furuncle. Furuncle. Um, can I have the definition, please? A localized swelling and inflammation of the skin resulting from usually bacterial infection of a hair follicle and adjacent tissue having a hard central core and forming pus, also called a boil. Can you uh, give me a sent give a, me a sentence? A painful swollen furuncle developed inside Amy's elbow. Furuncle. Can I have the part of speech? Noun. Furuncle. F U R U N C 
L E, your uncle. That's correct. Udiometer. Uniometer. Uniometer. Udiometer. Uniometer. Udiometer. Uniometer. U N I O M E T E R. Uniometer. Udiometer is E U D I O M E T E R. Hapia. Would you like oh, a definition? Hapia. Hapia. Yes, a Hawaiian please. pudding made of cornstarch and coconut cream. Hapia. Hapia. May I please have all the information? Yes. It's a noun. The word is from Hawaiian. Here's your sentence. The Rosenthal's Hawaiian wedding included a luau and a wedding cake filled with layers of hapia. No ha alternate pronunciations. Okay. Hapia. H A U P I A. Hapia. That's correct. So your word is navel. It means a churlish person, a miser. Here's your sentence. The minister urged each member of the flock to think and act with charity and not to become a navel. Can you repeat the word? Navel. Do you need all the information? Okay, this word is from a Hebrew name. It's a noun. There are no alternate pronunciations. It means a churlish person or a miser. Your sentence is, the minister urged each member of the flock to think and act with charity and not, and not to become a navel. Can you repeat the word? Navel. Nabel? Sounds correct. N A B E L, Nabel. Nabel is N A B A L. <laughs> Panacea. Panacea? Panacea. Panacea? Panacea. Would you like the definition? Mm -hmm. Okay. A remedy for all ills or difficulties, a cure all. Panacea. Panacea. Could you use it in a sentence, please? Ari refuses to believe that technology is a panacea for the world's problems. Panacea? Panacea. 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 P A N A C E A. Panacea. That's correct. Tinamu. Tinamu. Uh, can I get the part of speech? It's a noun. Uh, can I get the definition? Any of numerous birds that resemble common domestic fowl and habits but are related to rat-type birds, including the ostrich, cassowary, and emu. Tinamou. T-I-N-A-M-O-U. Tinamou? That's correct. Andouille. Andouille. A-N-D-O-U-I-L-L-E. Andouille. That's correct. <laughs> Zarsico. Zarsico. Okay, what's the definition? Means a Basque song or dance in 5 8 time and dotted rhythm. Zarsico. Zarsico. Z O R T Z I C O. Zarsico. Villi. Villi, can I have the definition, please? Small, slender vascular processes such as the minute, finger like processes which more or less thickly cover and give a velvety appearance to the surface of the mucous membrane of the small intestine and serve in the absorption of nutriment and of which each has a central blind, blindly ending lacteal surrounded by blood capillaries and covered with epithelium. Villi. Villi. Can I have the language origin, please? The word is from Latin. Can you say in a sentence? Villi are most plentiful toward the beginning of the small intestine. Villi. V-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. That's correct. Thank you. Gippsland. Gippsland, can I have the definition? Means a region of Australia extending along the coast in eastern Victoria from near Melbourne to the border with New South Wales. Gippsland, can you use it in a sentence? Jermaine saw a stunning iridescent abalone shell at a coastal market in Gippsland. Gippsland, are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Gippsland. G I P P S L A N D Gippsland. That's correct. Arinoco. May I please have all the information? This word is a South American geographical name. It's a geographical entry. 
It means a river in Venezuela flowing from the Brazilian border to the Colombia border and from there into the Atlantic Ocean through a wide delta. Sentence, the rich aquatic life of the Orinoco includes the piranha, the electric eel, and the famous Orinoco crocodile that can grow to be over 20 feet long. Orinoco. Orinoco. O-R-I-N-O-C-O. -O. Orinoco. That's correct. Baverdage. Baverdage? Baverdage. Baverdage. Am I saying it right? Baverdage. Bav Baverdage. Could I have the definition? Small talk or chit chat. Could I have the part of speech? Noun. Could I have the language of origin? Word came from French, which formed it from a Latin word. Could you use it in a sentence? After a stressful math class, Consuela welcomed the opportunity for Baverdage with her friends in the cafeteria. Baverdage. B A V A R D A G E. Baverdage. That's correct. <laughs> the definition, please? Collections of hymns and collects for all days of the year in the Eastern Orthodox Church arranged in calendar order and usually divided into 12 volumes each for a different month and each containing the proper of the immovable feasts of Christ or the saints for the month. Menea. Can, oh, can I have the language of origin, please? This word is from Greek. Um, can you please use the word in a sentence? The priest had an impressive collection of Menea. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a plural noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Manea. Thank you, Manea. M E N A I A. Manea. That's correct. Thank you. Your word's galena, and it means a mineral consisting of native lead sulfide occurring in cubic or octahedral crystals that is bluish gray in color with metallic luster. Here's your sentence. Ali gave his brother a near-perfect cube of galena for his mineral collection. Galena. Galena. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Galena. Can you use it in a sentence? Ali gave his brother a near-perfect cube of galena for his mineral collection. Galena. Can I have the definition? It means a mineral consisting of native lead sulfide occurring in cubic or octahedral crystals that is bluish gray in color with metallic luster. Galena. Can I have the language of origin? Latin. Galena. Can you repeat the word? Galena. Galena. G A L E N A. Galena. That's correct. Tam O'Shanter. Tam O'Shanter. May I please have all the information? This word is from a Scottish literary name. It's a noun. It means a woolen cap of Scottish origin that's made with a tight headband and a very wide, flat, circular crown, usually with a pompon in the center. Here's your sentence. Rory's tam shanter was noticeable from a distance because of its unusually large pom-pom. Tam O'Shanter. T-A-M-O-S-H-A-N-T-E-R. Tam O'Shanter. That's correct. Wigan. Let me give you the definition in the sentence, okay? Wigan. It's a noun. It means a plain weave cotton fabric with a stiff finish used for interlining as tailored coats or jackets. Here's your sentence. The tailor used Wigan to line the hem of the jacket. Wigan. Wigan? Could I have the language of origin, please? It's from a British place name. Could I have the part of speech? It's a noun. Wigan. W-I-G-A-N. Wigan. That's correct. Pothos. Pothos. Is it a plant? Yes. Right. Pothos. P-O-T-H-O-S. That's correct. Latin wa. Latin wa. L A T I N X U A. Latin wa. That's correct. <laughs> Nathion. Uh, repeat the word. Nathion. 
Nathion could have the definition. The midpoint of the lower border of the human jawbone. Okay, Nathion. 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 Repeat the definition. The midpoint of the lower border of the human jawbone. Okay. Nathion. Nathion. G N A T H I O N. Nathion. That's correct. Thank you. Juju B. Can I have the language of origin? This word went from Greek to Latin to English. Can I have the language of origin? This word went from Greek to Latin to I mean, English. sorry, your definition. The definition is a fruit flavored gumdrop or a lozenge. Jujube. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Jujube, jujube. Oh, okay. Jujube. J U J U B E? That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Armilla means a bracelet, especially a gold coronation bracelet. Sentence. The armilla in the museum came from the tomb of a 12th century Russian prince. Armilla. Arm armilla? Am I saying it correctly? Sounds right. Can I have all the information again? The word is from Latin. It's a noun. There are no alternate pr pronunciations. It means a bracelet, especially a gold coronation bracelet. Your sentence is, the armilla in the museum came from the tomb of a 12th century Russian prince. Armilla. A R M I L L A Armilla. That's correct. Neophiliac. Neophiliac. May I please have all the information? It's a noun. It means one who has or expresses a love of or enthusiasm for what is new or novel. Your sentence is a true neophiliac. Vince visits trade shows at every opportunity. Your um, etymology is the word is from originally Greek parts. There are no alternate pronunciations. Neophiliac. Neophiliac. N E O P H I L I A C. Neophiliac. That's correct. Pretermit. Could you repeat the word? Pretermit. Pretermit? Okay, look at me. I'm going to say it again. Pretermit. Pretermit? Pretermit. Could I have the definition? means to let pass without mention, notice, or attention, pass by or over. Pretermit. P-R-E-A-C-H-E-R-M-I-T. Pretermit is P-R-E-T-E-R-M-I-T. <laughs> Numinous. Numinous, what's the definition? Dedicated to or hallowed by association with a deity, sacred. Numinous, can you give me all the information? It's an adjective. The word is from originally Latin elements. It means dedicated to or hallowed by association with a deity or sacred. Sentence, a soft light seemed to glow from the numinous vessel on the altar. Numinous, 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 numinous. Numinous. N U M I N O U S. Numinous? That's correct. Butte means an isolated hill or small mountain with steep or precipitous sides that usually has a smaller summit area than does a mesa. Sentence A butte erodes mostly from its sides because its uppermost layers consist of hard rock and thus resist weathering. Butte. 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 Uh, could I have the definition, please? An isolated hill or small mountain with steep or precipitous sides that usually has a smaller summit area than does a mesa. Butte. B U T E. Butte. Butte is B U T T E. Ethnology. Could you repeat that? Paleoethnology. Paleoethnology. Okay, uh, what's the definition? 
means cultural or social anthropology of early prehistoric humans. Okay, paleoethnology. Paleoethnology, P-A-L-E-E-T-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y, paleoethnology. That's correct. Let's go. Your word is exegesis. It means an exposition or an explanation. Here's your sentence. The Pulitzer Prize winning work was an exegesis of God as depicted in the Hebrew Bible. Exegesis. Exegesis. Can I have the language of origin, please? Greek. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Mm. Can I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Can you please use the word in a sentence? The Pulitzer Prize winning work was an exegesis of God as depicted in the Hebrew Bible. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Exegesis. Thank you, exegesis. E, X, E, G, E, S, I, S, exegesis. That's correct. Thank you. Wary. A long, light rowboat made sharp at both ends and used to transport passengers on rivers and about harbors. Sentence. The wary was a popular passenger boat on the river Thames in Elizabethan England. Wary. Wary? Wary. Can I have the language version again? English. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Wary, query. Wary. Can I have the definition, please? A long, light rowboat made sharp at both ends and used to transport passengers on rivers and about harbors. Wary, W-H-E-R-R-Y? That's correct. Thank you. Your word is clister. It means a soft wax used on skis, especially for corn, snow, or crust. Okay, so the sentence. Wary of the spring skiing conditions, Janice applied some clister to her skis. Clister. Clister. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Clister, can I have the language origin? This word came from Norwegian, which formed it from a German word. Clister, C-L-I-S-T-E-R, clister. Clister is K-L-I-S-T-E-R. <laughs> Your word is ontic, it means of, relating to or having real being or existence. Here's your sentence. The actual action of a person is ontic, whereas the reason why they perform that action is not. Ontic. Ontic. May I please, uh, can you please repeat the word? Ontic. May I please have all the information again? Okay, so it's an adjective. The word consists of a Greek-derived English element and a Latin-derived English element. It means of, relating to, or having real being or existence. Sentence, the actual action of a person is ontic, whereas the reason why they perform that action is not. Ontic, E-N-T-I-C. Ontic is O-N-T-I-C. <laughs> Labret. Uh, could you repeat it, please? Labret. Labret, what's the definition? It means an ornament as of wood, shell, or stone worn in some cultures in a, in a perforation of the lip. Uh, can you give me all the information? Yes, it's a noun. The word is formed from an originally Latin part and a Latin-derived English element. It's pronounced labret or labret. And the sentence is, in some cultures, the tooth closest to a labret was extracted to reduce friction on the gums. Labret. Uh, can you give me the alternate pronunciation? So it's either labret or labret. Uh, what's the etymology? The word is from an originally Latin part and a Latin-derived English element. Labret, 
L A B R E T, Labret. That's correct. Hibernian. Hibernian, what does it mean? It means of, relating to, or characteristic of the Irish. Hibernian, okay. Uh, can I have all the information? It's an adjective. Here's your sentence. Casey researched Hibernian knitwear and learned that drowned Irish fishermen were often identified by their Aran sweaters. Etymology, the word is from a Latinized geographical name and a Latin-derived English element. It's pronounced Hibernian or Hibernian? Hibernian, H-I-B-E-R-N-I-A-N. That's correct. Gloriosa. Gloriosa? Gloriosa. Gloriosa? Can I have the definition, please? Means any plant of a genus of tropical African and Asiatic climbing tuberous herbs with flowers that are red or yellow and that resemble typical lilies. Can I Gloriosa. Gloriosa. Can I have the language of origin, please? Latin. Can you please use the word in a sentence? A gloriosa can reach three meters in height. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Gloriosa, gloriosa. Gloriosa. Can I have the part of speech, please? Now. Gloriosa. G L O R I O S A. Gloriosa. That's correct. Thank you. Krang. Krang? Krang. Krang. Can I have the language of origin? Dutch. Can I have the definition, please? It means the carcass of a whale after removal of the blubber and baleen. Krang. Krang. Krank? Krang. 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 Can you use it in a sentence? Yes. The stench of the krang on the ship's deck was overwhelming despite the strong wind. Krang. Can you repeat it? Krang. Krang, K R I N G. Let me say I. Be saying I. Krang is K R E N G. The word is ignite, and it means a fossil footprint. Your definition. Greta was overjoyed to discover an ignite on her hike in the West Andes. Ignite. ignite. Excuse me, excuse oh, me, sorry. stop. No, that's correct, ignite. Uh, what's the definition again? Means a fossil footprint. Ignite. I-C-H-N-I-T-E, ignite? That, that's correct. <laughs> Luby Lou. Luby Lou. Could I have the definition? It means a singing game in which children move arms, legs, and head in accordance with the words of the song. Luby Lou. Okay, could you say it one more time? Luby Lou. Luby Lou. Uh, could you repeat that again? Luby Lou. Luby Lou. Okay, could I have all the information in? It's a noun. This word is from meaningless syllables of text appearing in a song. It means a singing game in which children move arms, legs, and head in accordance with the words of the song. Sentence. Every morning at 10 a.m., all the children at the daycare gather in a circle and play Luby Lou. Luby Lou. Luby Lou. Luby Lou. L-O-O-B-Y-L-O-O. That's correct. Oh, thank you. Floxillation. Sorry, can you please repeat that? Floxillation. Floxillation? Can I have the definition, please? An aimless, semi-conscious plucking at the bedclothes observed in conditions of exhaustion or stupor or in high fevers. Floxillation. Floxillation. Can I have the language of origin, please? This word is from a Latin, excuse me, this word is from Latin plus a Latin-derived English element. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Um, can you please use the word in a sentence? 
The doctor explained that the patient's floxillation will subside once her dangerously high body temperature lowers. Thank you, floxillation. F L O C C I L L A T I O N, floxillation. That's correct. Thank you. Amemia. Sorry, what was the word? Amemia. Amemia, uh, can I get all the information? It means it's a noun, it means loss or impairment of the power of communicating thought by gestures due to cerebral disease or injury. Amemia? Or? Amemia. Sentence. The doctor felt that Edmund's amemia would improve as he healed from his accident. Etymology of the word is from originally Greek parts. There are no alternate pronunciations. Amemia. Amemia. A M Y M I A. Amemia. Amemia is A M I M I A. to go a few rounds and after a couple rounds if we don't break the tie we'll declare you co-champions okay so this word is a homonym so let me give you the definition in a sentence before you attempt to spell lira pipe it means a very long end of cloth originally an extension of the peak of a hood and later attached to a medieval round stuffed head covering or forming part of the old clerical and academic dress Sentence, Gareth wore a hood with a lira pipe down to his knees to the Renaissance Fair. It's a noun, the word is from Latin. There are no alternate pronunciations, lira pipe. Lira pipe, L-I-R-I-P-I-P-E, lira That's correct. Greffier. Greffier, can I have the definition please? It means an official recorder or keeper of records. Can I have the language of origin please? And this word is from a French word that was formed from a Greek derived Latin word. Um, can I, can you please use the word in a sentence? The office of the greffier is lined with ledgers. Um, can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Greffier. Thank you, greffier. G-R-E-F-F-I-E-R, -E -F -F -E greffier. That's correct. Thank you. Palliodiculus. Palliodiculus, P-A-L-U-D-I-C-O-L-O-U-S, Palliodiculus. That's correct. Thank you. Sardonics. It means an indistinctly crystalline translucent mineral marked by parallel layers of a deep orange-red variety of mineral with other colors of mineral. Here's your sentence. Jillian read in a book about talismans that wearing a pendant made of sardonics is said to relieve pain. Sardonics. Sardonics. Can I have the language of origin, please? It's probably originally Greek. This word went into Latin before becoming English. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Sardonics, sardnix. Can I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Sardonics. Thank you. Sardonics. S A R D O N Y X. Sardonics. That's correct. Thank you. Hydriotaphia. H Y D R I O T A P H I A. That's correct. Thank you. Oblast. Oblast. Can I have the definition, please? A governmental subdivision of the former USSR corresponding to an autonomous province or state. Oblast. Can I have the language of origin, please? This is a word that went from Old Slavic to Russian. Can you please use the word in a sentence? The Volga River flows through part of the Ivanovo Oblast. Oblast. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Oblast. 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 Can you please repeat the word one more time? Oblast. Thank you. Oblast. O-B-L-A-S-T. Oblast. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, we'll go one more round, and then if you both spell this correctly, we'll declare you co-champions. Teratology. T-E-R-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y. That's correct. <laughs> Tantivy. Tantivy. Can I have the definition, please? In a headlong dash at a gallop. Can I have the language of origin, please? This word is of unknown origin. 
Can you please use the word in a sentence? Riley ran 10 tivy towards second base after the bunt. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No. Can I have the part of speech, please? Adverb. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Tantivy. Thank you, Tantivy. T A N T I V V Y. Tantivy. Tantivy is T A N T I V Y. We go to a championship round of one. If you spell the next word correctly, you'll be declared the champion, you'll be declared the runner up. Okay, this word has a homonym, so let me give you the definition and the sentence. First, Kurgon means a burial mound of Eastern Europe or Siberia. Oh, uh, repeat that? Kurgon. Kurgon? What's the language of origin? Turkic derived Russian. Kurgon, K U R G A N, Kurgon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a champion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Faison, how do you feel? This was a long spelling bee. Um, I feel pretty good. <laughs> Talk to me about what it's going to be like to represent all of North Texas again. Uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, it's my third time going to national, so third time's a charm, I guess. <laughs> Talk to me about who out here in this audience has supported you and helped you get prepared. So, um, uh, my... My mom, my sister, my dad, and some of them over there. What is the experience like for you to get to go to the National Spelling Bee for the third time? I, I mean, it's really stressful. I have to. I have two months, but uh, that's. I. I think that's enough time to like study. <laughs> so the next two months you're going to be studying. Talk to us about how you prepare. So uh, I just go through the dictionary and like pick random words to like focus on. Last one I have for you. I saw you up here doing those deep breaths, trying to calm yourself. Is that strategy? That's what you're going to take with you to D.C.? Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look into the camera, give us your name, where you go to school, and say, North Texas, I'm representing you in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Hi, I'm Faison Zaki. I go to Rice Middle School. North Texas, I'm representing you in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Let's give it up for him. <laughs> Also want to go ahead and welcome our runner-up who's also going to be representing North Texas in the Scripps B. Come on up. Uh, I'm Shreya Gomtam. I go to Capel Middle School North and I'm representing you at the National Spelling Bee. Let's give it up for both of them. 